Hi folks, HR Funk here. About a year ago, I conducted a review of the Tizosh PX9 Tactical, which is a full-size duty handgun. And during the course of that review, I was overall quite impressed with the PX9, especially considering it falls well into the realm of what we would typically call the budget price range. So recently, when I was at House of Pain Armament, and I noticed they now had a PX9 Carry, which is the compact version of the PX9 appropriate for CCW and other defensive use, I really wanted to bring this handgun home for its own review. And in this video, we're going to take a close-up look at the PX9 Carry. I'm going to tell you about its features and characteristics. And in part two of this video, we're going to head off to the range and see how it performs. So with that introduction out of the way, let's get right to the close-up look at the PX9 Carry. And we'll start our close-up look at the PX9 Carry and the way you bring it home from the store, which is in the box. And as I open the box, you'll have to look very closely, but you might notice something missing. And yes, the pistol itself is not inside the box. Reason being, I've already mounted an optic to this pistol as part of the firing portion of the video that you're going to see later. And Due to weather circumstances and one thing and another, I've already recorded that prior to this part. So I know how it performed, I know if it's a tack driver, <laughs> and unfortunately all of you are going to have to wait to see that. In any case, when you bring your pistol home, it comes in this nice lockable hard case that Tizosh has now been using for a couple of years. This has a gasket around it to seal it. I don't think it's waterproof, but it is definitely water resistant. It also comes with a cleaning brush and a cleaning rod. We can see the owner's manual back behind. It has a holster that can be configured for either left-handed or right-handed use. Also, it can either be inside the waistband or outside the waistband, and it's a little hard to get off of there. <laughs> the PX9 Carry comes with two magazines and I believe these are yes these are checkmate magazines if you can read that right there there is a 15 round magazine and a 17 round magazine and they're both actually the exact same magazine except the 17 round has a two round extension base plate by the way these are SIG 228 pattern magazines so it'll use the same exact magazines as those SIG pistols if you need more of them and you come across the SIG magazines rather than the Tizosh magazines or the Checkmate magazines you'll be able to use those interchangeably. Also there is a magazine loader. There are two additional back straps and I think four additional side panels for the grip. This is a modular grip just like the full-size PX9 tactical pistol. And as I recall, if you mix and match all these different back straps and side panels, there are something like 27 different grip configurations you can come up with, so you should be able to find something that's going to fit your hand well. Also, there is a chamber flag and a trigger lock inside here, and I don't think I missed anything. So now let's move on to the pistol itself. And here's our first up-close look at the PX9 carry itself. In general terms, it is a polymer frame, striker-fired, semi-automatic handgun chambered for the 9mm cartridge. And turning the pistol around so you can view the port side, you might notice some design features that are reminiscent of some other handguns out there. Some of the slide contours, the grip design, and one thing and another actually are kind of a hodgepodge mix and match of several other handguns that have more or less been combined into the PX9 carry and overall it comes out to a pretty good looking package. It's a very business-like looking handgun and that was kind of the same thing that I thought about the full-size tactical version. The tail of the tape for the PX9 carry is going to be a little bit more literal today than it usually is because the only dimensions listed on the Tizosh website are the 3.5 inch barrel, and this is a hammer forged button rifled barrel by the way, and the weight of 24 ounces, but the overall length, the height, the thickness, etc. are not listed on there. Now there are some dimensions listed in the owner's manual, but I think in looking at them they are for a larger version of the PX9, not the PX9 carry. So what we're going to do today is grab an actual tape measure and the overall length appears to be 
almost exactly six and three quarter inches. The height, if I can move the pistol a little bit here, is maybe just over five inches. And I'll grab my calipers and see if I can get a thickness. The slide just forward of the ejection port is just shy of 1.05 inches in thickness. And I'm going to try to measure this portion of the grip right here by the magazine catch, which appears to be the widest section or the thickest section. And that's about an inch and a quarter right there. So dimensions are about what we would expect with a compact carry handgun. To give you a little bit more perspective, I brought a couple of handguns to compare it to. This is my CZ P01, which is a compact CZ75 variant. And the PX9 carry is a little bit smaller than the P01. I also brought my Masada 9S and in terms of overall length it's very close to the 9X 9S rather just a tiny bit longer and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a height since they have different sights on them if I try to line up the top of the slide the height is pretty close the 9S is obviously thinner, but it also holds fewer rounds. This has a 13 round magazine as opposed to the 15 and 17 round magazine of the PX9 carry. So that gives you a little bit of an idea as to the dimensions of this handgun. Starting our top down look at the PX9 carry with the sights, you can see the rear sight is serrated to cut down on glare, and the rear sight also has a Glock sized dovetail so if you want to replace this rear sight you can drift it out of there and replace it with anything that would be appropriate for a Glock pistol. The front sight has a green fiber optic and if I can get the camera to focus you can see it is also serrated to keep down on glare and when we look through the optic I'll try to get this so you can see it in fact let me turn the optic off and with the optic off, you can see the sights do give you a lower one-third co-witness through the optic. And you can also see, even through the optic, that front fiber optic is very bright. Speaking of the optic, the slide for the PX9 carry, at least this version, and there are different versions of the PX9 carry, but this one is machined to be a direct mount for RMR style or Holosun 507-407 size sights and this was no problem whatsoever mounting this sight right directly to the slide. As you can see here the slide has front and rear cocking serrations. They are deep and wide and easy to grasp. They're very functional. I'm not sure what the finish is on the slide and barrel. That's something I was not able to find so if anyone is able to find that please post it in the comments. One of my least favorite features of the PX9 carry can be seen right here. Ostensibly this handgun has a loaded chamber indicator and I will show it to you momentarily. It is very difficult to see. There is a raised portion on the side of the ejector, excuse me, the extractor right here and when a cartridge is inside the chamber that raises somewhat to give you a semi-tactile indication as to whether or not there's a round in the chamber. This is one of these things that if your fingers are cold or you're wearing gloves or you're under stress, I don't know how easy that's going to be to determine. And when I show you the visible indicator, I also think that is extremely difficult to use or to even see. So I've now placed a dummy round in the chamber and if you look very closely right on top of the extractor there you can see a tiny bit of red paint and in fact I'm having to hold a flashlight over top of the handgun for you to be able to even see that because if I move it away even with the lights in the shop here it's essentially invisible 
on a bright sunny day or on a very well lit range you might be able to see that if you are taking your time and looking for it otherwise I think both that and even the raised surface on the side of the extractor are very non-functional so as always if you have any doubt as to whether or not there is a round in the chamber check and be certain whether or not your handgun is loaded by the way as I said that is a dummy round that I've been using, so it is completely inert and it's safe to use when I'm handling the handgun in the shop. At the rear of the PX9 carry, we can see the cock striker indicator. And the only thing this indicates is whether or not the action of this handgun is cocked. Don't confuse this with the loaded chamber indicator. This gives you no information whatsoever as to whether or not you have a round in the chamber. When the trigger is pulled and the action is uncocked, you see that disappears. Obviously, if you were firing the handgun and the slide cycled after the round discharged, it would be recocked, so you would see that again. Moving on to the frame, we can see the non ambidextrous slide stop right there. Also, the takedown lever just forward of the slide stop. And the magazine release. The magazine release is reversible, so although the slide stop is not ambi, if you're a lefty, you can configure this so the magazine can be released from the opposite side of the pistol. The frame itself is, of course, polymer. And one thing that I noticed with the tactical model is the same with this pistol. It feels very plasticky and kind of slick right here in this area above the magazine catch. Now, there is a cutout portion here to make it easier to access the magazine catch, and that is on both sides, so in case you reverse that magazine catch. When we move down to the grip, there is texturing all the way around the grip, and this is sort of a medium texturing, I would call it, but these side panels of the grip are more of a rubbery substance, so that does give you a little bit more adherence to the palm of your hand when you're shooting with those, what I'll call grippy <laughs> side panels but it's not the same material that's on the back strap or the front of the grip so that doesn't have that rubbery feel to it. We see a textured area here in front of the takedown lever and that is on both sides so either for your forward thumb in a thumbs forward hold or as an index point for your trigger finger when you don't have it inside the trigger guard. I like that I mentioned in a recent review that's becoming more and more common on handguns and it's something I like having there. It's one of those tactile memory indicators so I know my trigger finger is on that textured area or if I come up and I have my thumb in a thumbs forward hold I know that I've got my thumb in the proper location so I do like that. There is a three slot equipment rail at the front of the frame. The trigger guard is squared off and there are some grooves in there to give that a little bit of texture if you like to have a finger forward hold on the pistol. The rear of the trigger guard has a pretty deep undercut right there to help get a good high hold on the pistol. There is a finger groove at the top for this finger and then just a hollowed out area for these bottom two fingers right there. Overall, the grip feels pretty good. Other than that sort of slick area right there, if there would just be some texturing maybe up here on both sides, that would probably help that considerably. Even so, we're talking about a 9mm semi-automatic handgun, so I don't think it's going to come out of my grasp when I'm shooting. Now, as I said, there are two additional back straps that come with the PX9 carry, and I believe four additional side panels. And it's astonishing how many different configurations you can come up with. <laughs> with all those different pieces and parts, so you should be able to come up with something that's going to fit your hand. Also, here at the bottom we see a slot. This is for a removable mag well, and on the tactical pistol, that was included. It is not included with the carry model, but if you want to add one, that would be very easy to do. The mag well itself on the carry model is beveled, as you see there, so that removable mag well would be in addition to this, even so, I don't know how necessary that's going to be on a carry pistol. The magazines are Checkmate magazines. They are 15 shot and 17 shot respectively. The only difference being the two shot base plate added to this one. There are witness holes in the back for shots or for rounds 2 through 15. 
There are not two additional ones for the 17 round magazine. At the bottom of the 17 round magazine there is a portion where you can grasp if you need to forcibly remove the magazine. On the 15 round magazine basically you can still get a hold of that floor plate if you need to and forcibly remove it. Now as I said these are SIG 228 pattern magazines. I don't know if any other SIG magazines will fit but if you can't get the OEM either from Checkmate or from Tzosh check out some SIG magazines and see if they'll work for you. The trigger on the PX9 carry is fairly wide and it has this red grooved inertial safety. When I squeeze the trigger there is not a lot of take up, a little bit of take up that you see there, but about the point where the inertial safety has been depressed into the face of the trigger there is no more take up. There's a little bit of creep that you can see there as I'm squeezing it's creep 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 and then it breaks. If you were shooting at any sort of quicker pace you're not going to notice that creep at all. The only time you might notice that is if you're really trying to squeeze the trigger precisely for a very accurate shot. But all in all the trigger is not bad. The reset is a little farther forward than we see with some other handguns. But again, that's, that's not a bad defensive trigger at all. I'm going to grab my trigger pull gauge and we'll see where that trigger is breaking. And here we go with the trigger pull test. And I'm just going to help get that inertial safety depressed. And the first pull trigger broke 4 pounds 3.3 ounces, which is about what I thought. This feels like a fairly light trigger for a defensive handgun. Let's try pull number two. Four pounds, 1.2 ounces. And one more. That was three pounds, 12.1 ounces, but this time the roller made it down to the bottom of the trigger, so it got a little bit more leverage. Even so, the three pull average, if I can get it to average the three pulls, there we go, just right at four pounds. So very good trigger all in all on the PX9 carry. The PX9 carry has a one year manufacturer's warranty against defects in material and workmanship and also a lifetime service contract for the original owner. So if you have a problem with these handguns you can send them back and get them repaired. Now some of you know that I recently had to do that with my Tzosh Raider. So if you wonder how that process went go back and take a look at that video. In fact maybe I'll put a link down in the information section of this video in case you want to go back and click on that just to see how the warranty work went. And that's going to do it for the close-up look at the PX9 carry. As I said earlier in part two of this video, we're going to head off to the range and see how it performs. But for now, if you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. Also, I want to say thanks again to House of Pain Armament for loaning me the PX9 carry. This video would not be possible without their assistance. If you go to House of Pain Armament or House of Pain Munitions, you can use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK, and that'll save you some money off your purchase from House of Pain. And don't forget the Target sponsor, folks. Go to Targets Online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. See you next time, and until then... Good shooting. Bye-bye.